she tries a pit, but finds it full of bees. She decides to risk the pool. In heat like this, the bees need water too. Lions can go without water for a long time, but this one is a nursing mother. She must drink. Maybe the bee pit isn't so bad after all. Large flocks of quilias are in the area, searching for seed and grain. As they stop by the pool to drink, their busy fluttering at the water's edge inspires the crocodiles with a keen and almost sporting enthusiasm. The monitor lizard is the scourge of both ground-nesting birds and the egg-laying crocodiles. It's a voracious predator, particularly partial to eggs. And the feisty plover immediately declares war. During the heat of the day, the sand becomes unbearably hot and burns the skin between the impala's hooves. For the plovers on their nest, this is when easy access to water pays off. The bird is soaking its breast feathers until they are weighted with water. It then hurries up the scorching sand to relieve its mate. The plovers are brooding on sand that feels hot enough to fry an egg. And by midday, they are changing guard at the nest every 10 minutes. Without the constant protection of their cool, wet feathers, the eggs could not survive the heat. The sand is so hot, it's a wonder she doesn't fly down. These buffalo have just one thing in mind. Their usual watering places are dry now, and they've had a long, hot journey to get here. One of the calves strikes out on its own and is soon in dangerous company. But these aren't the biggest crocs in the pool, and the lucky calf quickly returns to the herd. Croc's intentions are clear enough, but
But before they can find a small enough victim, the buffalo decide it's time to leave. An irritated hippo helps them on their way. and heat are now so severe that some animals with small young cannot supply enough milk and thirsty youngsters follow their mothers to water before they're weaned or wise enough to know how to drink. In an instant, both croc and fawn vanish into the pool, leaving behind a bewildered mother. Somewhere under the surface of the pool, the crocodile lies low with its prey, waiting for an opportune moment to eat without having to share. The most carefree creature in the pool is this baby hippo. She frolics around her mother in that special state that belongs to all young things. She is oblivious to the dangers in her world. steadily shrinking and is already too small for so many animals. But the hippos can't settle fights caused by overcrowding. There is no place else to go. As usual now, the hippos subside in an uneasy truce. Subdued by the day's heat and temporarily at peace, the baboons relax around the pool. His peace is shattered by a familiar cry of outrage. He's innocent, but he's too close to the nest, and the plover has a good eye for trouble. And young male baboons are especially targeted.
A sudden spat between rival crocs sends a ripple of panic through the pool. It's small wonder that the plovers are having trouble. A fresh track shows that a crocodile ploughed right over their eggs. This is their third nest of the season that's been lost to the crocodiles. Starting again from scratch, the plovers perform the ritual of selecting a site for a new nest. The baby hippo is exploring her world. The restraint of the crocodile seems out of character. But with two tons of devoted mother nearby, She's free to treat crocodiles with the same bold familiarity as the adult hippos do. These great artists of violence are obliged to hold a kindly pose as the hippo child wanders in her playground of gently smiling dragons and slobbers on their tails. A yellow-billed kite checks the pool for an easy meal and sights a dead fish. The surrounding land is parched and bare, and each night the hippos must trek for miles to find grazing. Other animals wander in the riverbed in search of the few remaining pools. But most now are little more than reeking mud wallows, full of dead and dying fish. Even so, the impala would drink here, but the pool is dominated by a single croc, the last of a group of more than 40 that were here a month ago. The monkeys won't risk it and drink instead in deep footprints. The fawn's attempt to drink is a small disaster. Now it's covered with stinking mud. The mother sniffs her offspring but doesn't recognize it in this foul disguise. <coughs> 